Hello, and welcome to part one of the P-TECH at Dunbar Mentor Training. My name is Alexia Smith. I am the Corporate Liaison for P-TECH, and we are so excited that you are joining us for this training. Um, the training will occur in seven parts, just so you can break it up over time. So let's get started with part one, which is the intro to P-TECH. So you might ask yourself, what is PTAC? PTAC is a ninth to 14th grade public school model that's focused on STEM fields where students obtain a high school diploma and a cost-free associate degree simultaneously. And PTAC is a really big deal. There are over 220 PTAC schools in 24 countries worldwide. So PTAC has a really big footprint. PTECH actually stands for Pathways in Technology, Early College High School. And the first PTECH school started in New York City, Brooklyn to be exact. And the corporate partner that supported the school is IBM. And the goal with that PTECH school was to allow students to get an associate's degree in a um, technology related degrees. So they were able to ultimately get a job at IBM. And it just really grew from there. So the majority of P Tech schools often are IBM schools. We, however, are a little different, P Tech at Dunbar. To learn a little bit more about what P Tech at Dunbar offers, we want you to take a quick look at this short video that will share with you what our program is about. So as you can see, P-TECH Healthcare has a focus on healthcare careers. So just a quick summary of what we are. P-TECH Healthcare is one of a handful of P-TECH schools who offer clinical degree programs. As I mentioned earlier, the majority of our P-TECH schools are IBM or technical schools. So we are really some of the first schools, if not some of the only P-TECH schools that offer clinical degree programs, which is really a 
very tall feet. <laughs> Now, P-TECH Healthcare is inside of Dunbar High School, but it's not Dunbar High School. So a lot of times people get it mistaken that if a student goes to P-TECH at Dunbar, that they are also a Dunbar student. That is not exactly the case. P-TECH at Dunbar has a different school number than Dunbar, and it also has a small staff that's separate from, um, from Dunbar. So, P-TECH students have a different curriculum. They have a focus on college, whereas Dunbar is purely high school focus. So we like everyone to think of P-TECH at Dunbar as a small college that's within a high school with a focus on college completion. Now, there are currently six associate degree pathways offered through P-TECH Dunbar. And the associate's degrees are offered through Baltimore City Community College. Now, we have a general science degree. And this is actually a new degree program. We recently added this for our fourth, fourth cohort of students. And this is a degree that will allow students to get general science requirements out the way. It's often a good degree that will allow students to transfer credits into a four-year degree program. Now, if there are students who really shine and are really making good strides and really adjusting to being college and high school students, there are some all-star options. But these particular degrees have pre-entry requirements. They are no joke, and you'll see what those degree options are. We, of course, have the nursing associate's degree. The nursing associate's degree, again, is a four-year degree. However, most students who attend or pursue the nursing associate's degree will want to go on and get a four-year degree or a BSN in nursing to continue their work. We also have physical therapy assistant. Physical therapy assistant, assistants support physical therapists. Again, this is a position where a lot of students can go right into the workforce. However, if they want to become physical therapists, they would need to continue their education. One of our degree programs that actually is a really good start for going right into the workforce is the respiratory care degree. Respiratory therapists are able to begin working immediately right out of their associate degree. And oftentimes they don't need to get additional um, credits or additional degrees to be an official respiratory therapist. We recently also added surgical technologists. This is one of our newer degree programs. We're really excited about this opportunity because we do have a lot of students who come in who want to be surgeons in the long haul. So we think this will really support them. And finally, we have health information technology. And again, health information technology is a degree program that is less clinical in nature. However, there are a lot of pre-entry requirements, much like the other degrees. So these are the six degree pathways that are offered, offered through P-TECH. Again, most students or almost all will start at the general science degree. Now, corporate partners, which are us, <laughs> um, provide wraparound support for our students. And our corporate partners are Johns Hopkins University in, Maryland, uh, in Medicine, the University of Maryland, Baltimore, and Kaiser Permanente. And together we have committed to supporting these students. And how do we do that? Well, first we offer professional and academic mentors. And that is part of why most of you are here because you are interested in being a professional or academic mentor to our students. The corporate partners also provide workplace visits and job shadowing opportunities. Of course, a lot of the workplace visits and job shadowing opportunities have had to come to a halt due to COVID-19. However, we are still actively trying to identify virtual experiences. Um, and we hope that our mentors of the future can help us identify a way for our students to get these valuable experiences safely. We also offer professional paid internships as a part of the P-TECH program, every student is entitled to participate in a six week paid internship during the summertime at one of the um, 
at one of the corporate partners. So it's really a good opportunity for them to get some strong um, experience on their resume. And then finally, there are trainings, trainings, conferences, and other opportunities that we want all of our students to take advantage of, um, whether it's something that's offered through our corporate partners or something that is um, a mentor or someone might be able to suggest to our students. So a lot of ways for our students to get the additional support they need. Now, PTEC students focus on three areas of success. So as a mentor, you will want to understand that these three areas of success consist of high school, college, and career. So of course, the students will be obtaining their high school diploma. They still have to do that in four years. And then of course, they'll be getting their college degree. This associate's degree can be completed in four to six years, depending on how quickly the student matriculates through the program. Again, it is offered at Baltimore City Community College. And then, of course, the career, as we mentioned, students participate in a five to six week paid internship. And the big deal in the commitment of the corporate partners is that these students will be first in line to apply for these positions at the corporate partner sites after graduation. Although we cannot guarantee positions, we will definitely allow students to interview if they are a PTEC student, which is really an amazing opportunity for young people. And one of the things that's also very important to know is how our students transition through PTEC. And this will be important for you to know because this will also allow you to, to identify how our mentors participate and support the students through the program. So at the ninth grade year is the year of college readiness. We focus on trying to get our students ready for college. Again, we are asking ninth graders, very young, very young students to be ready to be college students. And that's a pretty tall feat for some young adolescent students. We all know how we were when we were in the ninth grade. So we focus on getting them ready in the ninth grade. Typically during the ninth grade, mentorship is only focused on maybe if a student needs tutoring or academic mentorship. It isn't necessarily professional mentorship. In the 10th grade, the college journey begins. Our students start college the summer of their ninth grade year. And so that time for the 10th grade year is really getting their feet wet, getting them to understand the importance of college, understanding how to juggle both sides of the coin. And the 11th grade year is the year of professional development. And this is the period where our mentors are the most active. Students are assigned professional mentors. They get opportunities to practice emailing, um, professional communication. This is also the time that our students will do their paid internships. This is a period there where you might see the most activity as a mentor. And then finally, from the 12th through the 14th grade year is degree attainment. A lot of times students are finished with their high school diplomas um, at the 12th grade year. If they have not been able to complete their associate's degree at the same time, not a problem. They have an additional two years to co complete that particular degree. So as of December 2020, our first cohort graduated with a high school diploma in May 2020. So essentially we've had, we have five cohorts, but our first cohort who started in 2016, they just got their high school diploma, 100% of them graduated. And we will have our first AA degree graduate in the spring of 2021. If you see the young man in the top left-hand corner, on the right with the yellow shirt, Elijah Stovall. He will be our first graduate. He will be graduating with his respiratory therapy degree and he is 19. So an amazing accomplishment for this young man. Now 53% of our students in the first cohort are still continuing their AA degree with us. So again, they are finished with their high school diploma but they are still working towards that degree. 42% of the students did transition out of PTEC, but they are at least continuing to a four-year college, so we are really excited about that. As with most schools, we have been completely virtual since February 2020, which does create its own level of challenges. It's enough for a high school student to have to go completely virtual, but now we're looking at students who are doing virtual high school and college courses. And of course, since 
we started in 2016, mentors have been in place since that time as well. But mentorship has continued to evolve as we continue with this program and identified the needs of these students. Um, of course, professional mentors, which was the original model, um, professional mentors are still there. And we'll talk more about the role of professional mentors and subsequent trainings. Um, we recently added academic mentors, which has really been a need that we identified over the past couple of years, and we'll learn more about that. Um, academic tutors, who really focus on just tutoring students, is more about academics, is helping them with their classwork and studying. That is also a new initiative. And then, of course, overall, we are doing this completely virtual, so I know you'll notice that a lot of our photos, you know, a lot of things that we did were in person. And we really enjoyed having that um, closeness in that community. Unfortunately, we've had to try to recreate this in a virtual realm. So this is yet another way that mentorship has evolved, but we are up for the challenge. That is why we need mentors more than ever as our students navigate healthcare careers of the future. We don't know what the future holds because everything is so up in the air um, with the new world that we're living in. And that is why we need you to agree to be a mentor to our students. So this is the first part of the training. Please go to the next training, which is part two. And it is, what are my responsibilities as a mentor? I'll see you there.